to the channel it is your girl trucker jazz and today's video is gonna be like a quick video about like how i got my cdl at 22 years old and basically it's gonna be a whole thing then the next video y'all will see will be actually me talking about my experience with truck driving school why i picked the school i picked the different schools i you know factor in and out you know stuff like that that's gonna be more in depth in the second part of this video i guess you could say and then i'm gonna tell you guys so far my experience i've had on the road in that video so yeah because i was gonna do like my experience like overall once i was done i'm pretty much done already so i can just tell you guys my experience in part two so this video is about how i got my cdl at 22 years old so don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already click that bell so you know if i want to upload for you also follow me on all of my social medias they'll be in the description bar down below make sure you guys follow my main channel uniquely j that is lifestyle content hair related content uh story time challenges and stuff like that i don't know it's a lot of stuff going on over there like girl talks you can go check that out if you want to see me outside of like truck driving and stuff like that yeah you can go check it out it will be in the description bar and i also will link it in the i cards i don't know what side of the screen it is but it'll be in the i cards so yeah i got my notes on my phone so i'm gonna be looking at my phone a lot but yeah so i'm gonna tell you guys why i got my cdl so i've been wanting my cdl since i was 18 years old because originally one of my friends moms she's a truck driver and her husband is a truck driver so you know i just kind of heard truck driving through them and you know it's a good career path to make good money depending on your company if you're lease op or not and stuff like that like you know what i'm saying like fairly decent money and i'm not like a materialistic girl but i like to have money and like so when i do want to go splurge on things i like to have the money to go splurge and stuff like that you know what i'm saying like i have a lifestyle that i want to live so like basically truck driving is one of those things i wanted to do but like i said like <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why I, well one of the two reasons why i wanted to get my cd up for a nice lifestyle with decent pay then also another reason is to travel i know people are like you don't really see the world you don't really travel to state blah, 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 blah. stuff like that but you really do like even if you're passing through like it's the experience to pass through cities towns states dates like you know different places seeing people in different living envi environments that you're not used to so that's like another thing it's another plus it's just being able to travel i know a lot like i said like when i told my family like they were like why do you want to be a truck driver i said oh because you know i like to travel i want to travel stuff like that and they were like you don't really travel you're in the truck all day that's traveling okay but also like i like to get to see different places even if i'm not sitting there for a significantly long period of time i'm seeing places you know what i'm saying so that's another reason so that's like two reasons what well, three reasons because my friend's mom and her husband are the cdo i mean truck drivers and then a lifestyle that i want to have then also be able to travel so those three things that i want to do and reasons why i got into trucking but the reason why I didn't do it originally when I was 18 years old because I had already signed a six year active duty contract with the National Guard. And the reason why I did that is because originally when I was 17 years old, my plan was to go to college, you know, get a degree in like criminal justice or something like that. But then I was like, I got shipped off and then I was like, I'm gonna take a semester off. That semester led to a year that year led into like a year and a half and then when i did go to school you know we had to do online classing like online schooling and i'm not good at online schooling because i procrastinate and then like a lot of stuff was going one day i just like i'm not doing school but then i signed up for next semester and then i did like probably a week probably two weeks of school and then i got shipped out because hurricane duty orders and like we had a real bad hurricane that year and so i was gone from august to that time so i was already so back like if i was to go back into school i've been so behind and i would have to catch up so bad that it was gonna be too stressful for me so but now that i am coming to an end on my six year contract with the national guard i decided not to wait the like six months to like not even six months because some people don't even wear, wait six months they be like the month before they're about to get out to try to find like a steady job a steady career and then when they can't find that they re-up so me being the person i am you no know i'm not gonna re-up 
I have decided to start chasing the career I want right now. You know what I'm saying? Planning so when that time do come when I'm already getting out, they can't hold me back. They can't do anything. Well, like not they, because they can't make you sign another contract. I won't be holding myself back and having, having to re-up because I don't have a career choice. And also, I know some people might say like, oh, the military is a good career to have. Da -da 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 -da. Personally, it is if you're very passionate about the Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force, Space Force. Like, if you want a military career and that's something you have always dreamed of, then yes, this is the perfect thing for you to do. Like, that's a perfect job for you. But me personally, it's just not. Like, I originally signed up because I wanted to go to school, like, for free. The National Guard I was in, they it's a tuition exemption thing. I can get more into it. Like, I'll probably do a video on, like, a military career experience when I get out. Cause I don't want to talk about it when I'm in. The whole point of me saying all that was a military career is just not for me and I decided to start my trucking career so when my time do come to get out of the army I already have a career that emotion and I can transition very smoothly. You see what I'm saying? You get it, you got it. Okay, boom. Those are the reasons why. Alright, so those are the reasons why I got my CDO. Now it's time to talk about the signs I got when I actually started to put in my mind or I started to feel as though I need to start preparing to get into another career as soon as possible. Okay, so around November, December of 2021 is when I started to see signs, like the first sign I seen. I was on YouTube, you know, scrolling, trying to see like what I'm gonna watch because normally I watch true crime hair tutorials or like cheaters like for my men fatal attraction those type of fields like you can see like you know get a gist of what i used to watch so randomly one day on my like for you page my explorer page on youtube i saw this black female truck driver i know people don't like i know a lot of women and girls don't like the word female but like in like certain industries and certain career paths you go down it's not women and men it's like male and female like in the army so i saw a black female truck driver her name is nisha k you're on youtube i love her she is one of the first black female truck drivers i saw on youtube YouTube and the video the first video I saw was I'm giving you the exact title and I'm gonna link it in the description bar because it made me like want to get into trucking well the first video I saw of her was day of my life trucking vlog plus truck malfunction so that was the first video I saw of her so I watched the video and then I started going on her page you know trying to see other videos she had she did a pros and cons part one and two of like trucking and then she did um how she is a Christian over the road that was like one of her first videos I believe yeah, that's one of her first videos she put on her channel, which is how she's a Christian, how to be a Christian of the world, something like that. So yeah, so I started binge watching her videos and then eventually while I was watching one of her videos, another black female truck driver popped up. Her name is Rave Trucking. The video that I saw of hers is the exact video name. It's how I got my CDL. I also will link that in the description bar down below because she is like the thing that kicked off me into going into looking in not looking at that point but like knowing the path to go basically while watching her videos i took notes like she went through a truck driving school um the truck driving school she said she went through was not a good company so i already knew that i wasn't going that way going that route now that i got that out of the way over that the course of months and stuff i started watching video like i was really heavy heavily watching nisha k i still watch nisha k to this day i don't watch rave trucking but i do watch a lot of female truckers i don't even I think rave trucking has really posted if i'm not mistaken from what i've seen i don't think she really posted it's like the last video i saw of her you know the last one she posted was five months ago so basically that's like the start of what i had going on if that makes sense so now we're gonna get into the process of like actually getting my cd up so around may is when i was getting off of orders because i was on orders from the end of 2020 so like november 2020 to may of 2022 that's like a year and a half almost two years of being on orders of having a consistent base of money every two weeks where i had a lifestyle that i was able to live for a very decent amount of time and then me being me i kind of over budget myself when i got my new car and it like kind of set me back i was still able to keep my head above water even if it was like barely above water but anyway it was like the beginning of april beginning of may is when i started to look into like 
truck driving schools that I want to go to. Wasn't truck driving schools you had to pay money like upfront. I was gonna go to a truck driving school that you had to like basically pay over time. So pay over time is just basically like you sign a contract with them six months to a year. The kind of contract that I signed is a year long. So like once I complete a year with them, I don't have to pay that tuition back. That makes sense. I decided to go that route because at that time I didn't have like eight thousand dollars to front. Because truck driving school is very expensive if you didn't know, like especially local wise, it's expensive and you have to pay money up front. Anyway, like I said, I was looking at different truck driving schools and the truck driving school that she said that wasn't good was on my list. I just wanted to actually like read reviews for myself, but also take in consideration what she said because she is a black woman and black women experiences are different from everybody else's experiences, if that makes sense. So now I'm gonna tell you guys the different truck driving schools I looked at. I'm not gonna tell my company. I don't know. I just don't wanna tell my company as of yet. I don't know if I will tell you guys my company if I like, you know what I'm saying? It's just for honestly safety reasons, but if I do, then I do. Oh, uh, the different companies I looked at was Pam Transport, which is the one Ray Trucking says she went through. KLLM, I know somebody who works for them. Uh, Roel Transport, PR England. So those are the ones, and then also the company I currently work for. So for this vetting process that I did, which was a vetting process, as I looked at each of the truck driving schools, I went on their websites, you know, just to see like, look at the different CPM, which is in per mile, is what you get paid. Uh, one had like 40, 50, 60, that was the range of the, the pay per mile. And then also, you know, what their truck driving school had to give to you, it makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't think that makes sense. I can't explain it, cause it's like kind of hard to explain. What they are saying that they give to their employees as a company. And then also their truck driving school, what is, what's the layout basically, if that makes sense. But as I did that, I went on their websites. Once I was done looking at their websites, I went to Google to look at reviews, which is very important to look at reviews on everything you do. Whether that's clothes, buying clothes, shoes, purses, accessories, air, whatever. You always wanna look at reviews. It's also looking at companies about to go eat at or anything like that. So I went on Google, looked at their reviews. A lot of them had like bad reviews and some had good reviews. Some of the reviews was like, oh, if something broke on my truck, I had to pay out of pocket, even if they're not lease off. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. So I was like, so those companies, I just automatically X'd out. Also another thing in this vetting process was I wanted to make sure that they had people who looked like me, not just as a woman, but a black woman. It didn't have to be a black woman. It had to be a black person. And the company that I chose was like, in my opinion, the most diverse. So that's why I chose the company I did. It was two companies I chose between. The company I chose and then also KLLM. Okay, so I filled out applications for both my company and KLLM. My company was the first to reach back out to me and then probably like well, like a couple hours to a day is when KLLM reached out to me. They basically got me into like the recruiting process. Once my company responded, cause that was the company I really wanted to go with because I just felt it would be a very homey place. So I was like, yeah, this is the place I'm gonna go. If they reach out to me first, I'm going with them. I don't care who else reaches out to me. You know, I just did two applications. So instantly, probably like 15 minutes later, the recruiter reached out to me. She, you know, asked me to have my CDL permit. I didn't because I was working so much. I had to wait until my next off day to go get that. Yeah, so my next off day, I was gonna go take my test to go get my CDL permit. So during that time, I was like, you know, skimming over the CDL book. Y'all know CDL books are very long and you have to know like a lot of terminology. You have to know a lot of ins and outs, just like a regular driver's license, but it's like amplified. So my next off day in line waiting at the DMV, I got up super early. I could be like one of the first ones at the DMV. I think I was like third or fourth person in line. As I'm waiting in line, I'm like looking up the CDL book. They also have this app. It's DMV Genie. And that's what I used to take like practice for my um, driver's license test yeah so i use that and then the questions that i did get for free you know were very good questions i kept doing those questions over every time i took the test but you know it was just a thing that kept in my mind so like the questions i did see over and over i knew i went in there i paid my 11 to 15 dollars i don't know how much it was to take the test you get two tries a day unless you get caught cheating and you have to wait like 30 days before you can even take the test again so i put my information down i took the test i failed both times i was just like oh my god oh my god oh my god because like i don't know like i was really stressed in there because 
because you only can miss a certain amount of questions per section. Oh, before I get ahead, I want to tell you guys what is on the CDL test. So you have three parts. For me, you have to do four parts. So for the original three parts to get your CDL, you have to do general knowledge, air brakes test, and you have to do combination vehicle test. And the longest one is the general knowledge. You have to get, I'm about to see if it's in my phone. All right, general knowledge is 50 questions and you need to get 40 questions correct. So you only can miss 10. Air brakes test is 25 questions. You need to get 20 correct. Combination vehicle is also 25. You only need to get 20 correct. You only can miss 10, five and five. And my company, you also have to get like a tanker um, endorsement on your CDL. I didn't take my tanker endorsement until after I went through CDL school. But anyway, my second time I did the test, I was a little bit more prepared, but I still failed those two times. I think it was like Labor Day weekend or something like that. It was a holiday. So it was like a three day weekend. So over that three days, I went on YouTube and I just typed in CDL testing. I'm to find out they had like guaranteed questions that was going to be on the test. I studied that over the three day period. And I took my test. I passed it. Earth times a charm. Once I did that, I told my recruiter immediately, hey, I passed my test. She was like, okay, well, you need to, you need to go get a, a dot physical. I ended up going to Texas. And my original date was like in June, the beginning of June. I ended up going to Texas before I could get my DLT physical. When I got back home, I made sure to go to the office to get my DLT physical. So as soon as I got my physical, I went up there to the DMV. I gave them a copy of my physical because they gave me like three, four copies of it at the physician's office. I gave them the paper. They copied it, whatever like that. And she was like, okay, you can go now. I'm thinking I'm good. So I tell my recruiter, who was a wonderful woman, by the way. So like a day later, she was like, oh, it's still not popping up, whatever. So I ended up going back to the DMV and I was like, hey, you know, I came up here like a day or two ago and my company is still saying that my, you know, permit is not showing up or whatever like that. And the woman who scanned my physical the first time looks at me and says, it's because you don't have your physical on file. And I was like, well, I just came up here like a day or two ago, told them here's my physical and that's all I needed or whatever. They scanned it and they sent me on my way. I didn't say you because, you know, you can't mouth off to the people in the DMV because you can get escorted out and get banned. I just acted like it was somebody else. She was like, oh, do you have the physical with you? I was like, yeah. So I ran out to my car, got my physical. She copied it, do, do, do. So once I got like my physical and stuff, finally scanned into the system, she was like, oh, you have a flag on your, your license. And I was like, what is it? And she was like, oh, I can't tell you. You have to call this number or you got to go to the website. So I go home, I call the number. The line is busy. Like it literally rains and it hangs up. Like I was doing that going back and forth. And then eventually I went on the website. I just seen what it was. It was like something about car insurance or whatever like that. Cause I took it off of my 2018 Nissan Central cause it got flooded and the car was total lost. And where I was at, it wasn't my house. So therefore they, I had to keep the license plate on the car so they can identify the car. It was a third party who was gonna come tow my car. Basically, since I never returned the license plate, they flagged it and it was either I had to pay $800 or something like that. Or I had to go to the DMV and get it out. So I went to a different DMV, which it was a smaller DMV. And I was like, hey, I flag on my license. So I didn't turn in the license plates when my car was totaled. And I had to show them proof from my insurance company that my car was a total loss. And I had to pay like $23 in order to get that record expunged. The next day I go back to the DMV and I showed them the little ticket that they gave that it is like expunged. I paid the money off. I was able to take my ID picture. I told my recruiter that hey they got everything situated. So it was a lot of up and downs with getting my CDL permit like literally. It was the most hectic situation ever but when I got it they eventually hit me back when I was at 18 for the National Guard. I was able to get to the DMV. The DMV office when like when I was taking a break my sergeant ended up taking me because I asked him can he please take me because I really need to get this because I'm trying to get my CDL because I had like a, a restriction on my license. I can only drive on interstates in my state. I can't go out the state and drive on interstates. And they ended up taking it off. She asked me like, oh, you plan on traveling, you know, using interstate out of the state? And I was like, yeah. They took the restriction off. I saw her the new copy of my permit. We have your class date for July 23rd. So I was like, okay, good. Was it July 23rd? My bad. It was July 25th because my last day of AT was July 23rd. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, I'll go with that date. I was going to give you a brief like uh experience of my truck driving school experience but like i said i'm gonna be doing a video on that so i'm not gonna tell you guys that so after my truck driving school experience i did pass my ceo test but i'm gonna go more into depth in the second video but yeah so i ended up passing the test very much happy very much living life babes i mean it was a surreal moment but anyway so once i passed my test i ended up leaving to go home because i drove there some people took the greyhound bus or whatever like that i refused to take a bus um it's not nothing against buses because i have I have rode a bus before you know on a greyhound bus with strangers and also you have to stop in different
different locations. So not our drive would turn into a two day drive on a bus. So I would just prefer to first drive my car. You know, I turned in the paperwork that I need to turn into the DMV. And then I realized that they put the restriction back on my license. And I was like, hey, like, why is this restriction on there? And she was like, hey, it's something on your physical. Like I can't take it off. And the office in Ruston shouldn't have taken it off. It's something with the doctor. I had to go back to the physician's office to say, hey, y'all marked the wrong thing. I ran back and forth between the DMV and the physician's office like two to three times that day. Cause like I said, that morning, I went turning all my paperwork. The restriction was on my license. And also I had took my tanker test that morning as well. I passed my tanker test. So I got that endorsement on there, but the restriction was still on there. So once I left there, I went to the physician's office. And I was like, I told them the problem. And she was like, oh, okay, okay. So they fixed the problem. I didn't even check to see if they fixed the problem. So once I left the physician, I went to the DMV office. I told them, hey, they fixed it or whatever. And the one was like, they don't have anything marked on here. You have to go back. So I left the DMV, went back to the physician's office. I was like, hey, it's nothing marked on here. So then that's when she fixed it. And then I made sure to check that she fixed it before I left. And I was like, okay, thank you. So then I took it back to the DMV. And she's like, yes. So mind you, I already took my ID picture. So I had to retake my ID picture. I didn't have to pay again because I literally got my ID that same day. But yeah, so that is how I got my CD heel at 22 years old. As you guys can see, it was definitely a roller coaster of emotions and like a lot of like ripping and running and like stuff on my part, stuff on the DMV part, and then also the physician part. So it was like a lot of like moving pieces and we all was like skipping notes to get to like a solution, but eventually the solution was founded. I'm very happy, very grateful for that. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully this video isn't too long, but I did want to be more in detail because the first time I filmed this video, the video was probably like seven minutes long because I was rushing through everything very in depth of the whole process. So that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell to get notified when I upload. Don't forget to follow me. All of my social medias, they will be in the description bar down below. If you want to see me in a different element, then go subscribe to my main channel. It will be in the i cards on the screen somewhere and also in the description bar down below. And until next time, I see you guys in my next video. Thank you.